Yes, I uh, completely agree. Fantastic presentation, Grace. Thank you so much. Great to have you here with us. Uh, so um, this really is uh, kind of the the wrapping up of this two day conference. Um, I feel like I want to just have bring out my closing cup of Joe, um, right? Little sip because the time has come for me and my co-chair, Ryan Fincham, who is the director of the Center for Protected Area Management to conclude this fifth iteration of the Tourism Naturally Conference. Uh, before passing the baton to Ryan, uh, who's gonna have some final words as well, I'd like to just say a few things about our community in attendance this year. As I've mentioned a few times uh, today and yesterday, we've had, uh, around a thousand, over a thousand people actually registered for this conference. And um, you know, given the demographics and the focus of our presenters and our programming, um, it might actually surprise you to know that only a little over 20% of our registrants were from the US. Attendees from uh, around 50 other countries were joining us as well, um, either live or will be uh, joining later. Um, with the recordings, but uh, the next highest representation among those rep those uh, countries represented uh, are from India, Germany, China, the Philippines, Indonesia, Australia, and South Africa, respectively. And of course, uh, a number of other countries um, are represented or have been represented here throughout the conference. So uh, I also wanted to just note, as I alluded to uh, in several comments throughout today, um, that nearly half, and it's really around 45% of those registered for the conference this year were students. So I just wanna give a little kind of a message to uh, our nearly half uh, you know, of the thousand registered here. If that's you, if you are a student, um, I just want to say that uh, the entire conference team is very thankful that you've joined us, and we definitely look forward to your ongoing involvement in the Tourism Naturally Conference series moving forward. And as a quick aside in that respect, I want to say that if any of you students did not hear the commentary from the Director of Destination Development uh, for the Colorado Tourism Office, Andrew Grossman, during his panel yesterday, that was from day one, I really, really encourage you to go back when uh, the video is, is available and uh, listen to that panel where, where he really made multiple clarion calls, as, as I'll name them, for you to consider working in this uh, transformational industry that we call tourism. Um, I think that our panelists from this afternoon, Ken Widmeyer and Sam Albert, also sent out these similar calls for uh, just, you know, getting you to explore this uh, really amazing industry. So uh, given the myriad tasks and responses characterizing both conservation and tourism in our world today, uh, many of which we've discussed uh, over the last two days, um, our student voices and involvement are invaluable. So that said, to, I just want to close by saying uh, to all of our attendees, regardless of where you are based, um, where you are in your career path and uh, how your life happens to intersect with protected areas and tourism in this changing world. We hope that the speakers and the sessions throughout this year's conference have been meaningful for all of you. So that's all I've got to say. I'm going to pass the baton over to you, Ryan. Ryan Fincham, the director of the Center for Protected Area Management. Um, Ryan, it's all yours uh, for your closing thoughts. Thanks, David. Appreciate it. Appreciate yeah. the, uh, the warm up, and uh, it's it's uh, bittersweet to be coming to the end here. But uh, we definitely really appreciate these last two days. So thanks so much. And um, this really has been an excellent virtual and uh, therefore low carbon conference. Uh, there's really been a lot of great sessions, um, each one of which has left me with reflections about our own collective work. Uh, I hope uh, others are, are also walking away with some of those reflections and, and thoughts about where we go from here. I actually find myself thinking about a bunch of different ways forward as we wrap up these, these two amazing days of, of uh, Tourism Naturally Conference. And I thought, in fact, I might share uh, some of the questions that are in my mind uh, with all of you. 
Um, you know, I find myself asking, are, you know, are we working actively for better representation in tourism and conservation? If we are, we need to be asking ourselves some questions like who is and, and who is not benefiting from, from tourism opportunities, who, whose stories are or are not being told within our protected areas and why. Um, are we developing the leadership skills required to navigate the constant changes we are likely to continue to face? Are we prioritizing our own leadership development as well as the leadership development with students and young professionals and other audiences that are perhaps more used to receiving technical training? Um, are we providing our students and practitioners with systems thinking skills to help us dive deeper think differently and act holistically when it comes to finding conservation solutions or new pathways forward for sustainable tourism? Are we equally valuing traditional knowledge and indigenous ways of knowing and doing in addition to formal or more modern forms of education and, or project approaches? Um, are we ensuring the continuity between generations of practitioners and specialists so that we don't have that generational gap when it comes to implementate, implementing good ideas or getting the next generation involved more early to help us older folks figure things out? Um, are we communicating the human well-being benefits of protected areas and sustainable tourism experiences as widely as we should to the public? especially to people that live near protected areas. Citizens of any nation should feel welcomed and encouraged to visit their own protected areas or public lands, in addition to the people that have traveled halfway across the globe as international visitors. Are we working to support communities that have perhaps become solely um, or overly dependent on tourism for their livelihood activities to help diversify those activities, to build a more robust and resilient economic future that can better withstand major disruptions like were experienced during the peak of COVID-19. And finally, and perhaps most importantly, uh, are we taking the time to take care of each other, ensuring that our own wellness and mental health is considered? We do a lot of training at the Center for Protected Area Management and uh, on self-leadership, including self-care, and time and time again, we find that very few people working in conservation and sustainable tourism actually prioritize the self-care and wellness practices that we teach or that we often are developing or encouraging our visitors to experience in protected areas. We must ensure that we're taking care of ourselves, our families, our work colleagues, and our communities so that we can be in the best frame of mind to implement our best conservation and tourism programs. I think as we try to answer these questions, hopefully in the affirmative, we will get closer to an understanding and an operationalization, if you will, of the Build Back Better slogan that was mentioned earlier in this conference. We have to define what better looks like, and we have to define it collectively so that it actually means better for everyone, that all voices are represented. We obviously have a ways to go. But I also think we're making real amazing progress, inspiring progress, and that was demonstrated in so many of the presentations in this conference. So thanks to everyone for taking time out of their busy work schedules and lives to participate in this conference. Thanks especially to those joining us from time zones that required you to join us late into the evening or night. Thanks to the founding consortium members, the advisory board, and the speakers. And also thanks to all the students, as David already mentioned. I hope you all are leaving this conference inspired about all the amazing work opportunities that are out there. Special thanks goes to our team here at CSU that worked so hard to put this together. Mike Benfredo, David Knight, Paul Layden, Emily LeBlanc. It really was a great team working together after, uh, throughout all these months. And now the closing of a conference like this, and I'll invite Emily, I think she has a slide she might want to share, a drum roll for the last and final announcement. But uh, the closing of a conference like this wouldn't be complete um, uh, since it's part of a series if we didn't also uh, announce where the next version of this Tourism Naturally conference is going to be held and who will be hosting it. And so I'm really excited to announce that the sixth edition of Tourism Naturally will be hosted by Federico Nicolini, who you've heard from throughout this conference, from the University of Pisa in Italy. And it is expected that it will take place between May and June of 2024. And I'm also really excited to announce that this will be an in-person conference. 
So please stay tuned for more information about this next Tourism Naturally Conference in 2024. And with that announcement, as they say in show business, that's a wrap. So thank you everyone for your participation and have a wonderful rest of the week. Take care, everyone. We'll see you in Italy. <laughs>